The wealthiest place in the world is not the gold mines of South America or the oil fields of Iraq or Iran. They are not the diamond mines of South Africa or the banks of the world. The wealthiest place on the planet is just down the road. It is the cemetery. There lie buried companies that were never started, inventions that were never made, best-selling books that were never written, and masterpieces that were never painted. And the cemetery is buried the greatest treasure of untapped potential. Those are the immortal words of Mal Monroe. My question is to you, is what populates your cemetery? What dreams are in the eternal sleep? What gifts are boxed in a coffin? At some point, you had an idea. You were making headway. What turned it into a headstone? In the story of Joseph, we see a man who refuses to let his purpose die. As a boy, he has a dream that he is destined for greatness. He knows that he will ascend above his siblings, his older brothers, and achieve more than they could imagine. Does that sound familiar? Did you not once find yourself dreaming of a time where you rise up, where you exceeded the bounds of your immediate environment? You were not born to be average. You were born with the potential for more. But some of us allow other people to stop us from dreaming. Joseph's brothers were stronger and more experienced than he was. They were more established. By all rights, he could have justified settling for the bare minimum. But that's the difference between the ordinary and the extraordinary, where the average man justifies, the great man defies. They defy the odds. They defy circumstance. They defy limitations. They recognize that the responsibility for their success is primarily dependent on themselves. It's time for you to take ownership. It's time for you to dream again and stick by that dream. The next very thing that happens to Joseph after his dream is that his brothers throw him into a pit, a dried up well. Maybe you can empathize with that. There may have been people who betrayed you. There may have been people who have stabbed you in the back. And they may have been the people closest to you, but that doesn't mean you get to give up. But that doesn't mean you get to give up. Just because their eyesight is not good enough to see your vision, it does not mean that you are hallucinating. Just because the person you trusted left, it does not mean that you are not worthy of love, worthy of opportunity, worthy of healthy relationships and success. Joseph had it bad. He was in a well, a thing that was supposed to refresh him and be life-giving. The thing is, when you hang around toxic people, they will turn sources of life into something that is draining. They will suck you dry. If you feel empty, if you feel like you have nothing left to give, then maybe it is time you did an assessment of the people around you. Pay close attention to the places they take you, the way they treat you, because passion cannot thrive on mediocrity. It will be poisoned by negativity. Don't let it go to the graveyard. Make sure that when you work, when you dig deep, that you dig wells, not graves. Because if you wear yourself down to the bone, then you will end up a skeleton. And the only acceptable place for a skeleton is the cemetery. Joseph knew that and he held out. He kept grinding, but he stayed within his boundaries. He kept being faithful. He stayed true to himself and resisted temptation. He didn't allow himself to be distracted by the beautiful woman who wanted him. He didn't allow prison to crush his spirit. Instead, he kept the dream in front of him and worked with the diligence of someone who has already seen it come to fruition. It is time that you did the same. The dream does not come to life when it comes true. It comes to life in your mind. It comes to life in your imagination. And once it is alive there, it will grow into maturity and manifest in reality. Keep the dream alive.